this Batista Canyon? Yeah. Well, that's great. All the orange groves. I would go get some orange juice. Yeah, I, I bet you there's cameras all over this place. Look how they have these trims so machines just go down and pick them. I don't see any cameras anywhere. Well, can you imagine? I bet you there are. I bet there are. Yeah, but there are people picking these. Oh, my God. Oh, you can't get across. They're right there, growing wild. Oranges. See, they bring water down from Lake Hammett down here. I was just wondering if they had more than oranges there. See, we don't know. I don't know, but I haven't seen anything but oranges. Might be some avocados. Yeah, I haven't seen one avocado tree. Trust me, if I saw an avocado tree, I might get out and pick them. I mean, look how many miles of orange trees there are. I know. Now, what does this say right here? Yeah. I would go pick some. Well, when we come here, you can ask them. But until then, I'm not going to watch you. That one's so full, it's about ready to fall over. Some of these, they need help picking these. <laughs> we took five or six of them, they wouldn't care. I mean, you will be astonished how far this goes. This canyon goes back in here. Have you been back here? Yeah. This is Batista Canyon I was telling you about. It just goes on forever of nothing but orange groves. I'd say there's more orange groves here than we're in orange. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, and you think they're going to miss five or six oranges. See, you're not allowed to pick these. It's roped off. But where it's not roped off, you can go in and pick them. Oh, well, you can step right over that right there and go pick a couple. <clears throat> I want to enjoy it. Huh? I want to enjoy the drive. The guy's sitting on the porch up here watching the horn grow. Oh, shit. I saw something by the side of the road that were just wild. that are uh, forest fire fighters. Uh, they have them all over the place so they're localized to where they're fired. And they're not real bad guys. They're depends how they are decriminalizing, you know, violent crimes to the point where they're not on death row. No, there's there's no well it might be. It's going to that fire gas chamber. <laughs> Ah, oh, give me the fire. No, they're not death row. No, they're probably guys that are on like an honor ranch. The conservation core of Bautista Canyon. I think those are cottonwoods. Huh? Those are cottonwood trees. Oh yeah, I saw the cotton.
the vulture. Vulture. Oh, uh, snake. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. We have to come back here? Yeah, we'll come back. Did he get the snake? Yeah, it looks like it was eaten. Oh, it was a dead snake? Yeah. He probably killed it right there. Oh, I thought vultures. Oh, vultures kill things too? Well, no, I guess maybe something else killed it. Maybe, maybe somebody car drove ran over, over it. it. Yeah. So you can take this canyon all the way over to uh, 79 at Julian, back that oh, way. Oh, really? Yeah. How far did you go? To the Conservation Corps. Oh. Beyond that, it's like a dirt road. I hope I got enough gas. Yeah. I hope I have enough gas. Today we are headed up Bautista Canyon Road for a drive-by Bautista Conservation Camp number 36, part of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, otherwise known as CDCR. The primary mission of the camp is to provide trained hand crews to assist the California Department of Forestry and fire protection with suppression of wildland fires, emergency flood control, and search and rescue. The CDCR is responsible for the selection, supervision, care, and discipline of the inmates. On June 27, 1990, the worst tragedy that a camp could endure hit Bautista. Seventeen Bautista crew members were overrun while battling a fire in the Domenagoni Mountains, southwest of Hemet. This fire resulted in the death of two Bautista crew members, Victor Freira and Aaron Perry. To think about it, it was like a, um, like a movie. It's a very unique community, the last place you'd expect. In remembrance of the fallen firefighters of Bautista and fallen firefighters throughout the state, firefighter memorials began dedications in 1997. The Bautista CDCR has proudly represented the camp program by responding to emergency incidents from the borders of Oregon to Mexico and the Pacific Ocean to Nevada and Arizona. Cal Fire maintains 44 camps throughout California, supervises the work of the inmate fire crews, and is responsible for inmate custody while on daily grade projects. CDCR staff often accompanies inmate fire crews on out-of-county assignments or on local assignments located near residential areas. Inmates are directly supervised 24 hours a day while on work projects and while assigned to emergencies. In addition to fires, crews have been assigned to rescue efforts in local parks and are also eligible to respond for flood suppression. The camp is nestled in the historical Bautista Canyon, the route used by the conquistador Juan Bautista de Anza in his discovery of the Riverside and San Bernardino Valleys. Also known as the site of the original Bautista springtime exercises, located some 3,000 feet in elevation, the camp is exposed to a medley of climate conditions, typically to its high desert terrain. Often the summer is dry and hot, while in the winter is cold with an occasional snowfall in the months of December through April. Bautista has a maximum capacity of 120 inmates, which provides six trained firefighting hand crews. When not responding to emergency incidents, the inmates work on conservation projects including eradication of non-native plant species at Diamond Valley Lake and Lake Matthews 
fighting the bark beetle infestation in and around the community of Idlewild. Community projects have included construction of community centers, fire stations, parks, and soccer and baseball fields for valley-wide recreation districts. Bautista's Cabinet Shop is in demand throughout the Riverside County to design and remodel their offices and living spaces. Bautista is also known for their expertise in making plaques, signs, and distinctive logos. The prisoners like the fire camps because they rarely get to see the outdoors and get paid one dollar per day. They're sent into areas with high heat and dangerous situations. They will never be hired to work for the fire department with a criminal record, however. That's where they stage with trucks, ship them out of here. See that? Bring them back here to rest. You know, when they see them laying out resting, this is where they would bring them back. Because they're behind, you know, the fence. They put them in there. So you can't see that. Oh what yeah, we're not there yet. This is their staging area when they're uh -oh. bivouacking and going out. I wonder if that guy back there was a prison guard or something. I didn't look on him. Was he all by himself? It looked like he just changed the tire. There's no cell service back there. There isn't. Oh, no cell service. I thought you said self-service. <laughs> That's all there is. Yeah, at all. Yes. State prison property. Oh, so it is. And there's probably surveillance cameras all over something around here. Because oh. they're looking to make sure that we're not going to break anyone out. Oh, of course. And here comes this black stealth truck. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I'm looking for cameras. Very high fire danger today. See? Oh, that's it. That looks pretty nice. Too nice. Yeah. There's fire trucks over there too. Well, you want to go in there and yeah. see if they'll, uh, no, I don't want to go in there. You want to go in there and ask for a tour? All oh, the firefighters. Oh, they've got horses. Oh, no, that's protecting the horses. No, they're riding the horses. We don't want to go in there. Well, they don't know that we don't have somebody there. This isn't a place to visit them. I think they're going to be fighting fires. Yeah, they ship guys out that are just doing time, that are almost out and stuff. Yeah. And they don't want to take a chance on getting caught because they'd have to do a lot more time. And they're probably close to being released. Yeah, I just don't want to. I didn't think we're getting, we're chasing a joint wanting to break it out. Mm -hmm. Even the orange uh, uh, uniform? Yeah, okay. I do. I do. Okay.
I can't see that it's hard duty except when it comes to fighting fire. Yeah, they're guys that are going to get out soon and they wouldn't risk running away because they have, they get caught and have to do more time. So they're pretty trustworthy. some manzanita trees back there. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's where they stage. It's a pretty desolate area, actually, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go? Up, out of this canyon? You know, this road right here, they can walk on. And it's so far away. Of course, they could get caught real easy on this road. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you're right. There's no incentive when they're here. Try to escape. No, because you're going to get out soon. They wouldn't put somebody there that it would be worth that escaping. Yeah, it's. But it's got to it's got to be someone who's rough enough to want to be fighting fires. Well, young enough. Yeah, you know, they probably get them for, uh, you know, cut back weed abatement here and there. More than just fight fires. They would actually be... Yeah, because they're in the orange uniforms. You see them in the orange uniforms. Yeah. Okay, we got to go, you know, cut down some... Brush. Brush. Well, they probably enjoy doing it. It beats sitting in a cell all the time. Oh, yeah. They get out and get to do something. Exactly. You know, maybe they learn somewhat of a trade, so when they get out, they can be gardeners or something. Movers, gardeners, carpet cleaners. Well, they're learning how to do gardening. Here? Yeah. I want to make sure there's no snakes here.
because most of the time when you see a snake, it's crossing the road. Well, it's because that's that's when you're likely to see them. Otherwise, you'll never see them. You know, mm -hmm. up there. Yeah, well, I'm always looking up there to see if I see one swimming around the rock. Mm -hmm. 